Hello everyone and welcome. In this lecture we'll learn about facet grids. Facet grids are a 2x2 two two grid of facets and we'll be using those for our data visualization in this lecture. As usual we start by importing the libraries and modules. Import NumPy, Panda, Seaborn and Matplotlib's PyPlot. We have the special function here that will let us see graphs in our Jupyter notebook. We'll be using the tips dataset. So let's start by loading the dataset by using Seaborn's load dataset method. And we'll store it in a variable called tips. So tips is equal to SNS that load dataset. And then we'll be using the tips dataset. So the first thing we need to do while using facet grids is that we have to initialize our grid and we do that by simply calling the facet grid function so seaborn has a function known as facet grid facet grid and then we'll pass the data set that we'll be using and column and row so it accepts those arguments for our row for instance let's use the smoker column our smoker data and for our column let's use time and then data is coming from the tips data set let's run it it says then keyword argument after keyword argument so tips let's move tips to the beginning run it again okay so this is our facet grid of facets we have two by two grid of facets so now that we have initialized our facet grid the next thing we can do is use the map function to map our facet grid to another function let's see how we will do that so i'll copy this paste it down here and let's save this in a variable called x okay and then next what we'll do is we will map our facet grid to another function let's do that and then again we'll save it at the end we'll save it in the same variable x so x is equal to x that we'll be using the map function so plt that Let's take the histogram function and then let's apply total bill. Total bill. So what we are doing here is we are using the map function and this map function tells Seaborn to apply the matplotlib's hist function to each of the segments in our data. That's what we are doing here. We initialize our facet grid and then we use the map function to tell Seaborn to apply matplotlib's hist function to each of these facets, to each of the segments in our facet grid. And in this case, in our matplotlib's histogram function, it takes at least one argument. So we passed the total bill argument or parameter. Let's run it now. Okay, here we have our facet grid now so we mentioned here row is smoker and column is time so the first grid here the first facet grid here we have smoker yes and time is lunch right and then we have total bill here so for the second facet here smoker is yes and time is dinner and so for smoker yes we have lunch dinner for smoker no we have lunch dinner so those are our rows and columns and as i mentioned this hist function takes at least one argument so we pass total bill and we see the total bill so that's an example of a facet grid okay so this plt that hist is a function 
found in uh, Matplotlib. Let's look at another example. We mentioned that this plt.hist function takes at least one argument. So we can pass some more arguments. For instance, let me paste it here. We can pass another argument like the color argument. So if we want to change the color, we can say color and then pass any color that we want. So if we run this, now we'll have green histograms. And if we want to change the number of bins, we can pass the number of, we can pass the bins argument. So let me paste it here, total beer. Let's change the color to maybe blue. And let's change the number of bins to maybe 15. Let's run it and see. Now we have a different facet grid. Let's look at another function. So here we used matplotlib's hist function. We mapped our facet grid to matplotlib's hist function. Let's look at another example and consider matplotlib's scatter function. Matplotlib also has scatter function, which will allow us to draw scatter plots. So let's do that. The first thing we need to do is initialize our facet grid. So we'll call Seaborn's facet grid function and we'll pass our tip set asset for our col column. We'll use time and for our row, let's use smoker. Okay. And again, we'll save it in a variable called X. You can save it in any variable that we want, that you want. And then we'll apply the map function and call histogram matplotlib's scatter function. So x is equal to, and we'll save it again in the same variable x. x.map, let's call the scatter function, plt.scatter, and the scatter function takes at least two arguments. So let's pass the two arguments that we want. Let's use total bill and then tips maybe. So we have two arguments, that's the minimum. Let's run it. Let's see. Oh, we have, we spelled, we spelled smoker wrong. So let's change it to smoker, run it again. And this should be tip, not tips. Let's run it again. Okay. So now we have our facet grid. So for our rows, we have smoker, yes, and then smoker, no. Time is lunch and dinner, lunch and dinner. And we have total bill paid and tip. So we can see that the higher the total bill, the higher the tip, right? So we get more information from a facet grid. For instance, we are able to capture information about whether a smoker, whether a customer is a smoker or not, and whether the time was during lunch or dinner, and the amount paid and tip. So we are able to capture lots of information from a facet grid. We can also pass additional attributes to our facet grid, and then view more information, we can change the color and so on. Okay, let's look at one more example. For this example, let me copy this line here and paste it here. And what we'll do for this example is our map our facet grid to Seaborn's regression plot so that we can have a nice regression fit to our data. So what we'll do is we'll call the map function and call Seaborn's reg plot method or function. And let's pass total bill and tip. So same as what we did here. Okay, let's run it. 
So now we have a nice regression line fitted to our data. So these are some of the things that we can do to our facet grid. So using the map function, we can map our facet grid to various functions and grab more information about our data sets. Great. In the next lecture, we'll continue our discussion on facet grids. Thank you, everyone.